a Christian mother. Exodus chapter number two, we'll start there this morning. And I want to show you three different mothers in the Bible. Take your Bible, turn to Exodus 2. We'll start there and show you one named Jochebed. She was the mother of Moses, the man of God. And then I'm going to show you two more quickly this morning. So follow along with me in your Bible. We'll start there in Exodus chapter number 2. Look at it. And there went out. When a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi and the woman conceived and bare a son and when she saw him that he was a goodly child she hid him three months. The reason she hid him was because king, the king, Pharaoh had ordered that all Hebrew babies be killed. And when she had that little baby, she said, I can't stand the thoughts of them killing my baby. And she hid him three months. And they come around there with, with search warrants and everything else, saying, got any kids in here, got any kids in here. And it got to the point where she couldn't hide him. Now look what she does. She made up her mind the devil wasn't going to get her boy. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for me? Thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. I'm going to stop right there for time's sake. You know what an amazing story you just read there? You could make a whole movie out of those 10 or 12 verses. The law was that every Hebrew child, male child, be killed. The woman gives birth to a baby boy. When she sees that baby boy, her heart, I mean, falls in love with him immediately. Nobody but a mother would know what that feels like. But I've had a lot of them tell me. They said, when you look at that child that you've carried for nine months and you know it's part of you, and part of your husband, and it, now it's a human being, and God has let you have that child. Right? They, there's no other feeling like that in this world of being a mother. And uh, and they and and she took it and she said, uh, uh, "They're going to kill him. They're going to kill my baby." And so she started thinking, "What can I do? What can I do?" She didn't just give it up and say, "Oh well, here it is. I'll turn it in. You can have him. I've got my career. I've got my job." I'm going to try to get my figure back. I'm going to, so I can fix so I don't get stretch marks. And I want to get a raise at work. And I, I want to date a bunch of other men. So go ahead and date. No, she didn't do that. She didn't do that. She said, I'm going to save this child one way or another. She took it and she put it in a little ark, like, like a little tiny, um, like we, we'd say a, a bassinet, but it had a, had a, a roof on it, like a little box. And put a little bread in uh bed in there and put it in the river around the weeds like sugar cane growing up and flag growing up and hid it. And she said, I'll just come back and check on it. They're going to come and check my house to make sure there ain't no baby. They come knocks on the door. You got a baby in there? No, sir, we don't. I don't believe you. Get out of the way. And they took swords in there to kill that baby and the baby wasn't in there. She had hid him back yonder in, in the bulrushes. And all of a sudden... Pharaoh's daughter, the man in charge having all the babies killed, comes down to wash herself. They didn't have showers. They washed in the river. So she comes down to take a bath, and her maiden's got her towel right here over her arm, you know, and one of them's got the soap. One of them, no, Lord, nowadays they'd have to have shampoo and mousse and curl, about 15 different cans that they sucker y'all into buying. 
Uh, you know, VO5 is the same as that expensive show. Soap, soap, buddy. I, I, I just wash everything with soap. That's what I do. And, uh, and, and, and uh, they, they uh, she brought all that stuff down there, curling iron, drop cords and blow dryers and everything else. Well, run, run, had, got electrocuted in that, in that river. And, and all of a sudden, Pharaoh's daughter, uh, uh, somebody looked over and said, what is that? Looked like that guitar case floating in there. I said, I don't know. Go over there and get it. And she pulled it out. I said, something's in here. And she opened that box, and the Lord said, cry. And he went, and, and she said, bless its little heart. God, she fell in love with it right then. Now, that's the difference between a man and a woman. When a, when a baby goes, we don't fall in love with them. Especially when it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Like it was last night at my house. Tiki, he, and, and she sleeps a little harder than I do. Tiki goes, eh, 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 eh. Just enough to keep me awake. And I said, I'm going to get me some of them earbuds like them teenagers and put them in there. Uh, so, but anyway, when he cried, she got him. So she protects her children. A good mother will protect her children. As a matter of fact, History is filled with stories of women who went the extra mile and the extra mile. You know, I've noticed something about this story. Moses' father is not mentioned. I don't know if he ran off somewhere with somebody else. I don't know. Maybe he got locked up and was in jail. I don't know if I don't know where Moses' father was, but he's not mentioned in this story. His whole salvation depended upon his mother. I too could say this morning, when I was growing up, the godly influence that I got in my life came from my mother. And many of you could say the exact same thing. It's over and over and over and over and over. I read about a mother who, uh, whose son was in prison, in jail, up in Philadelphia many, many years ago. And she would uh, bring food, sometimes her own food, and make sure they fed him in jail, but she was afraid he wasn't getting fed good enough and would bring him food and sit there and watch him eat it. Nobody does that but a mother. No mother, no, the closest thing you can get to the love of God in this world is a mother's love. That's as close as you can get. Unconditional love, no matter what, is what a mother's love is. She loves and protects her children. Ladies and gentlemen, a mother will stand by her child when nobody else will. Uh, he said one time, you've heard me give that story, he said uh, uh, a teacher was at school and she's trying to teach math and teach uh, fractions and division. And so she said, all right, uh, now, Johnny, you've got 10 people in your family. You have one pie, and you're going to cut it. What portion of a pie would you get? And Johnny said, one-ninth. And she said, no, 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 wait a minute now. You're not thinking. There's 10 people in your family. you got one pie, and you're going to cut it up. How much pie would you get? He said, one-ninth. She said, honey, that's not right. You're not thinking. He said, there's 10 people in your family, not nine. And he said, mama would say she didn't want any pie. And nobody that, has, uh, that don't have a good mama don't understand that. And there's been case after case after case where mama did without to make sure. I know my mom did. My mom, when we was little, I'll never forget she didn't tell us this until I would grown up. She had me and my two sisters. I had one sister three years older than me. My other sister, Debbie, one year older than me. And all of us just like that with the flu at the same time. And her with the flu throwing up fever and all day long at the house, no car and no way to go to the doctor. And my dad, well, he, my dad was gone. We didn't even have a car when I was real little up in Clinchfield. Daddy walked to work, and he was working or hunting all the time. And she finally got a hold of her brother and come and took all three. I mean, sat in the doctor's office about three hours with three kids with the flu and you the flu. Nobody does that but mother. Nobody does that but a mother. She'll do anything to protect her children. That's right, brother. I, you've heard me tell this story before, and I love it. They said years ago, 
in the, in the army. They was in this big battle. And uh, uh, the United States won something or was trying to take back some land. And they said, we got a big flagpole over there. And they said, we want somebody. Is any of you soldiers brave enough to take the American flag and climb up that pole and hang the flag? Nobody would do it. Nobody's brave enough. Finally, this old boy from old country down there in Arkansas somewhere, from old country, old redneck family, his mom had a praying mom. Uh, he jumped up and said, I'll take the flag. And they said, man, you're crazy. I wouldn't get out there. They bullets flying everywhere. He said, I'll take the flag. And he said, in 20 minutes, I'll take the flag. And they said, all right. And they all said, well, we'll cheer you on. 20 minutes went by, and they said that boy grabbed that flag and run through their bullets flying on both sides of him, got up there, got up that flagpole, tied on this, said, I can't look. He's going to get shot. And he tied that thing on, come right back down that pole and run over there. They cheered, they clapped, they hollered. They said, you're the hero. Hey, I want to say hallelujah or something, but that ain't what they said. And they said, uh, uh, you know, you're the hero. And they give him a big cheer in hand and one of them same now say they just one thing I don't understand what's this 20 minute bit why did you have to wait 20 minutes he said I'll tell you why he said my mama back home in Arkansas is a praying woman my mama knows how to pray my mama knows how to get a hold of God and he said my mama promised me when I left that every day at 4 o'clock she'd be on her knees praying for me and he said it's 4 o'clock back Arkansas time right now and I know nothing couldn't happen to me with my mom praying for me. Now I'm telling you this morning that's what a real mother does with her children. She prays the protecting power of God over her children. They ain't nothing like a mother's prayers over your life. I want to tell you mothers here this morning, nothing can help keep your kids out of trouble like you staying on your knees for them. After they've done got on the school bus, after they've done gone and got married, stay on your knees. Ring the prayer bells of heaven. Get a hold of the glory of God and pray that God will protect your kids. Let me show you a second one. Take your Bible and turn to uh, Luke chapter 1. I'll show you another mother in the Bible that is faithful to her husband. A real Christian mother protects her kids. A real Christian mother is faithful to her husband. Look in Luke chapter 1. This is the story of Zechariah the priest and Elizabeth his wife. Look here what it said in Luke chapter 1 and verse number 5. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and they were both now well stricken in years. Hold your finger there. They had got old and still never had a child. She wanted a child really bad, no doubt. Every woman does and prayed, but it just never did happen. But I want you to notice what she done. She stayed with her husband and faithful to her husband all of those years. What about that? And it came to pass, uh, that began to happen here, and look, uh, there's a bunch of people praying, and look what happened in verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And that, of course, became none other than John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Now, the Bible talks about the, the great man, not a greater man born of women than John the Baptist. His mother was faithful to her husband. The Bible said they were old, and the Bible said they were blameless. So that meant that Elizabeth had stuck with that man through the hard time. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. If you've been through a bad relationship or divorce or anything, sometimes you can't help it and it's happened and it's done and it's over with. But if you are a married woman right now, if you're a married woman right now, it is a great honor for you to be faithful to your husband. When a bunch of huzzies at work all want to get together and take a girl's weekend to the beach and all go down there and get wild, I've known some that done that. I've known married people that done that that go to church every Sunday. You tell them 
to jump in the lake and swallow a snake instead of, I mean, the Atlantic Ocean and do whatever they want to do, that you ain't going with them. You say, hey, you don't have to go to the beach with a bunch of your girlfriends and leave your husband at home. You'll wind up getting the devil in you if you ain't already got him before you leave here. Say amen right there. She was faithful to her husband. I thought about Miss Janie. Right there, Rhonda just lost her mother a uh, week before last, uh, week, a week ago, Tuesday, Monday. Ten days ago, Miss Janie went home to be the Lord. Her and Brother Ray were together 50 years. 50 years she was with Brother Ray. And I'm telling you, that Brother Ray, he was, he was a player, I'm telling you. I, and, they, and y'all remember Brother Ray, what a blessing he was. And him and Janie uh, were together 50 solid years. That's right, brother. I, I heard about they had one of them talk shows on TV, and they had these women up there interviewing them. And on a talk show on national TV, one woman on the TV show said, I'll just go ahead and tell you, if it comes right down to it between my dog and my husband, my dog comes first. You say, how awful. All of them don't say it, but they practice it. A lot of them do. (whistles) Ladies, don't everybody shout right there. If you'll kiss your dog, not your husband, you are a perverted really I mean there's something wrong with you I mean <laughs> I mean, I, I know husbands his wife won't even hold his hand and, and, and wipes little foo-foo's bottom that's sick I, I'm telling you uh, this morning that she is faithful to her husband she is faithful to her husband many of you know uh, many of you have known me for years and, and uh, brother Jason and, all, and, and Miss Millie and Roy some of y'all know uh, my girls know uh, Tater Sheehan and y'all remember Tater Sheehan. Uh, remember the story of Tater Sheehan. Tater Sheehan was the town drunk in Marion. And we prayed for him for years and years and years and years. No Tater finally got saved and become a great testimony for the Lord and lived right about 20 years, five years before he died. And Earlene, had, I think he had nine kids. Earlene's gone to heaven now, gone home to be with the Lord. And Tater would get drunk. And out there in Marion, they have all them little old hollers in here like where I live. He goes down this way and up, down this way and up. And there's kudzu vine. Y'all know what kudzu vine is? Okay. Uh, it, it grows that much overnight. If you get your garden grow like that, buddy, you'd have some food. It'll, it'll go across the road in a couple of days. It really will. Unbelievable. And that's brought that stuff over here from England or somewhere to stabilize the bank, and it took over. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, that kudzu vine was over there, and Tater would get drunk and pass out in a ditch and she couldn't get him home. And Earlene, they said, would sit there with a, la- a flashlight or something all night with her husband passed out d- drunk in the ditch so he wouldn't get snake bit. You know what you're thinking this morning? You're thinking, well, if he got drunk, I'd let him lay up there and get snake bit. That's the difference. And actually, you're right, really. But I'm telling you, they just don't make them like that no more. I'm telling you, I remember, you say, I think a woman's a fool that would give her mind. You don't think a man's a fool that'd give up his life for a woman? Because you're a hypocrite. And you know what? Listen, I think a man should be willing to give his life for his wife. Supposed to be, right? And I can tell you stories. Uh, E.V. Hill, the great old preacher out in California, great old preacher, years ago, years ago, he, he, there were threats on his life, and they said that they got word, his wife, they got a letter or, or, or a note or something, there was a bomb in the car, and she got out early in the morning and got out and started the car and drove it down the road. She said, if it's going to blow anybody up, let it be me, not my husband, he's God's man. You said, that's awful. You wouldn't think it was awful if he did it for you. Hey, I'm telling you about mothers that love their husband. Love their husband. Preacher down in Texas. Wife prayed and she said, Lord, I give you my husband. Don't let him get sick. If anybody got to get sick, let it be me. He's a preacher. God bless my husband. Over over and over they're faithful to their husbands there's nothing wrong with being faithful to your husband there's nothing wrong with being faithful to your wife amen 
You're laughed at for that kind of stuff nowadays. But I'm going to tell you something. Every one of them nuts in Hollywood would give anything in the world to have a real husband or wife that loved them that much. They sure would. They love it. Don't you feel bad at all. Number three. Let me show you one more. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to show you a woman that's faithful to God. Faithful to God. She's faithful to her children. She's faithful to her husband. Thirdly, she's faithful to God. Turn in your Bible to uh, 2 Timothy. And we'll look here at a verse of Scripture. In chapter 1, Timothy, the great young preacher, the most promising young man of Paul's ministry, whom Paul sort of passed the mantle on to when he died. You know where Timothy got that faith? He did not get it from Paul. He didn't get it from a revival preacher. He didn't get it from an evangelist. He didn't get it from listening to a CD, a, a Brother Danny or Phil Kidd or somebody. You know where he got it? Got it from his mother. Look at uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. He said, Timothy, you got a great amount of faith, boy, and it was first in your grandmother Lois and then in your mother Eunice. He said, Timothy, your faith came from your mother I want you to develop it. I want you to be a great preacher. I want you to evangelize the world and thank God for that faith you got from your mother. Half the people in here this morning could say, that's where yours come from. An old lady, many, many years ago, prayed for her son for 60 years. I said, 60 years. Said, Lord, save him. Lord, save him. And one week, I think before her death, she got a phone call. Her boy was saved. C.I. Schofield, who edited the famous Schofield Reference Bible, was a lawyer. He was an attorney. A lot of them old great preachers were attorneys. That's where they got that sense to do them divisions and write to divide the word of God and stuff. He was smart men, brilliant men. Brilliant IQ and study. And Schofield was a lawyer. And his mother prayed, save my boy and call him to preach. Save my boy and call him to preach. Save my, he's a lawyer out making money. He ain't going to quit being a lawyer and live on a preacher's salary. Anybody be crazy to do that. I mean, so especially back then, old circuit riding priest. They didn't have no way, no, no, nothing. He's making a lot of money. And guess what? God saved him and God did call him to preach and he edited one of the most famous reference Bibles the world has ever seen because one mother stayed on her knees that God would say, I challenge every mother in here, stay on your knees, get in your prayer closet, give up whatever worldly pleasure you might have to give up and pray that God will get a hold of your, your kids, your boys and your girls. Let the kids see your prayers and feel them. One woman, her son was wicked and mean as a devil, in and out of prison, and she believed God would save him, call him to preach. And she got a telegram one day that he's dead, had died in prison. And she, I mean, she went all to pieces. She bawled her eyes out. She said, that can't be true. That can't be true. And she's tore up. God, I prayed all these years. And guess what happened? They come to find out they had made a mistake and got the wrong number, somebody else by that name or something, and it really wasn't him. He wasn't, he wasn't dead, and he did get saved. I don't know how much you believe in the power of prayer, but when people are right with God and they keep praying, let me tell you something, mothers. You are not wasting your time when you're on your knees praying for your kids. By the way, you do understand what kind of world they're growing up in. You know there's people out there right now would take your kid and sell them. They're having all kinds of TV specials on now about child trafficking. and it, it's a, it, ain't, it ain't like it used to be. They'll pick your kids up at Walmart and sell them like they would a dog or an animal. And if they don't get them, the drug dealers are waiting on them. 
And I mean, if they, they uh, we, we're keeping all these foster kids now, and, and they've been over to our house, Lord, they've asked us every question in the world five times. Every question you can ask. Have you ever stumped your toe? Yeah, I mean, they want, I'm telling you, you got to put through the blessed ringer. And they were talking about the water. We have, we have a swimming pool, and they said, you got to have a fence. Right? And they kept telling me, you got to do this to protect these kids. you got to do this to protect. And you know what I told her? So, you know, you know she knows who I'm talking about. You know what I told her? I said, you know what they ought to do? They ought to make a law that anybody that keeps foster kids can't have HBO in the house. That's what they ought to add to their restrictions. I can't hear you. Come on, people. Surely you don't watch that filth, do you? If you got it, you ought to get rid of it. Regular TV's bad enough. I said they ought to get rid of it. They ought to make a law. They ought to make a law. Anybody has foster kids is not allowed to have rap music or rock music in their house. You talk about something dangerous. You talk about something that'll mess them up. That's 10,000 times more. Listen, we put up a fence that high. cost me $1,300, and Molly ran over that thing like a squirrel. She they don't even phase her. She, now you, you see how that stuff goes? Let me tell you something. Hey, you know what our kids need? They need protection from the hell that's out there waiting to pervert their minds as soon as they get old enough. Amen? Godly mothers, now's the time. Let your kids feel your prayers. Let them walk in on you pray. I used to grab my girls by the hand. <laughs> I'd grab hold of their hand. I'd say, bow your head. And I'd say, God, bless them. If they're doing anything wrong, hit them, get them. They'd say, Daddy. I'd say, I mean it. I mean it. They're better off him to get them, get you whipping, and get it over with than to let you go on sinning. My mom was saved in a Methodist church up there in Queensville in Marion. She called it converted. She wrote it down in her Bible. Betty Castle, converted, 17 years old. That's what they call it, converted. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, a, that's, that's not a bad word at all. Converted. You get converted from a heathen to a Christian. Converts, that's what we call it. And she was a good girl like that. Never drank, never done nothing. Never, Lord, I never seen my mom do nothing wrong. I'm sure she did, but I never seen her. And I'll never forget and when I was in my teenage years and I played in a rock band when I was 13, 14, she fussed all the time. She preached, she preached, she preached. She never let up. She preached us day and night. And when I was 17, out driving, I had a motorcycle. I bought a motorcycle off this boy and I had a little OMG because I loved convertibles. Still, still do. I'd, I'd like a convertible that makes a way more sense than a motorcycle because you can just sit there and feel the air instead of having to do this all the time and, and, you know, straddle that thing. But I had a little old MG, and I thought, I'm going to wreck. I wasn't in sin. I mean, I was like drugs or anything like that, but I was headed that way. The only thing kept me out of trouble in high school was I played ball, basketball, and you could, if they caught you smoking, you was off the team. I mean, you done. They had more. They had more stricter rules now than Christian school does. And uh, mom kept praying and kept praying. And I went to revival at Nebo Baptist Church, and I got under conviction. And people started going to the altar and getting saved, and all that stuff. Mom taught me started coming back in my head. The devil said, "You don't want to go up there and get saved. Look at your people. Look, look. People think you're crazy." And the Lord said, what's it going to matter what people think when you've been in hell 10 million years? And mom used to sing a song about, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I want to go to heaven because hell's an awful, awful place. And I'm telling you, I got saved. I got saved. And I owe that to my mother. You get them kids and put them on your lap and open that Bible and tell them Bible stories. Tell them. I mean, when they're three and four, tell them Bible stories. Tell them about Noah. Tell them about... Jacob, tell them about Samson. Tell them some most exci- tell them about Jonah and the whale. Tell them it'll stick. I'm telling you, it'll stick in their heart. And God will bless you if you'll be a faithful mother. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. 
Andy, if you will, just get that song again for us. We're going to do something different this morning. In just a minute, I'm going to let them sing in cooks, sing that old song about mother. I don't know if you're a mother here this morning and you've been feeling guilty. You're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, everything he preached I'm guilty of. I need to get my act together. I need to get my life right. Why don't you come and do that this morning? Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're a mother here this morning and you're saying, you say, you know what? I'm going to go down there. Your most important thing ain't your career. It's not. Your job ain't it, y'all. It's your kids and your, and your life. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Come on, join me on this altar right there. Come on, right now. Come on, mothers. Come on, right now. On a dark, get out of your seat, Amen. Amen. That's right. Mothers, let's get in this altar this morning and let's just pray. God, make me the Christian mom. That ought to be. Come on, that's right. That's right. Others, come on, mamas. Come on, mamas. Let's just get down here and kneel down and pray. Others, others, come on. There's still, there's plenty of room over here. Just get out of your seat and let's pray this morning. Oh, God, make us the mothers you want us to be. Dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, help us, God, we pray. Yes, God, help us now. Come on, come on, mamas. Come on, mamas, right now. Come on, young lady. Just get out of your seat and come right now. Now's a good time just to straight start all over again and be the mother God wants you to be. Come on, come on, others right now. Yeah, man. All's going to matter one of these days. With a grass covered old. Hallelujah. That's all that's going to matter. It's one of these days. Come on. Neglected. That's right. That's right. Come on, y'all. Come when on, y'all. Spring seasons come. Yep, man. Yep, man. Yep, man. Hallelujah. Yep, man. Yep, man. Yep, man. Come on. Come on. Right now. Come on. Come on. Right now. Yep, man. While we wait. If you're a mother here this morning, you say, you know what? I need to get right with God. Come on right now, Mama. Come on. Get your kids at church. Teach them the Word of God. Get your heart right with the Lord this morning. Before we go to this morning. Lord, bless you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He'll bless you for it if you'll let him. He'll bless you for it if you'll let him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. While the children are 